Look at the picture. See the skull. Visible Frankenstein controls. The Brain Thoughts Broadcasting Radio. The Frankenstein Earphone Radio. The latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls. controls. Well, hello everybody, and thank you all to our patient Joshes for bearing with us through our yearly holiday hiatus. Our holiday hellacious hell. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think next year everything's on a Friday, so it won't be uh, nearly as disruptive to our recording schedule, but still. Welcome, at long last, back to Frankenstein Control. Welcome back. Yeah. It's good to be back. It is. It is, it is. Uh, 2019 is dead and gone, hopefully along with all of our painful memories and experiences. And 2020 is here to start things anew. I'm definitely ready for a fresh start, let me tell you, because 2019 sucked dick. Yep. Uh, for you. Yeah, it really did, personally. Pretty good for me. <clears throat> yeah. But, uh, you know, if, if 2019 was Harvey Weinstein, here's hoping that 2020 is Joe Para. <laughs> More on that in a bit. Well. Um, <laughs> I've talked about Joe Para before. I'm going to talk about him again today. Um, anyhow, in just a bit. Uh, because unfortunately, the year has already managed to start off, if you'll forgive me, with a bang. Oh, <laughs> no. no. Yeah, it's time to check in on the news. Dear God, help us. Uh, tensions with Iran reached a frightening height just a day into the new year after President Trump authorized a drone strike which killed, among others, an extremely important Iranian general I didn't know existed until I was informed <laughs> of his ceasing to exist. <laughs> Sorry, I know I'm usually your smart men source for important shit like that, and I'll admit I'm remiss in my duties, but I've largely stopped paying attention to international incidents because we have such a raging landfill inferno to de deal with domestically. So, uh, yeah, I, I I dropped the ball on that one. I was like, it's all your fault. <clears throat> yeah, I, he's dead because of you, B. Right? He really is. And the Iranian people can beat my portrait with shoes <laughs> and <laughs> whatever else they do. I guess the um. I'm just imagining a drone strike on the general from the fucking oh, insurance commercial. Oh, if we could only be so lucky. <laughs> if we could only be so We're lucky. We're always attacking the wrong people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> Thanks, Trump. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> we, we live in a world where that, that very line said that very way is feasible. Yeah. Oh. I prefer not to tempt reality Black Mirror style. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying to tell myself that these extremely stupid, clumsy attempts to start World War III really just mean uh, that we're all trapped in the beta of Splinter Cell Butt Wipe Horizon. <laughs> Butt Wipe Horizon? Because <laughs> uh, those games have really been losing their edge since uh, Tom Clancy died. They, they're not what they used to be, let me tell you. So mm. they're, they're not so good on the uh, geopolitical maneuvering and mechanizations. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they're not. Machinations. I don't know. I'm tired. I don't know the word. <laughs> It's been a long, it's been a long year. Machinification. <clears throat> we'll go with that. By the way, though, uh, since the drone strike, and this is real, uh, fiery threats have been coming out of Tehran, vowing revenge and death to America from a commander in the Revolutionary Guard who, and again, I am not making this up, is named General Salami. <clears throat> no. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, General Hossein Salami, if I'm uh, if I remember correctly, but yes, <laughs> his name is General Salami. Salami, and he wants to kill us all. <laughs> the Salami's after us, y'all. It's the Salami Swami from the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> this is how we're going out, getting bombed, getting carpet bombed by the Salami Swami. That's just a it's just a fact of life. Uh, things are just going to keep getting more and more absurd until the world explodes. <laughs> I kind of hope so. Um, <laughs> we, don't, we don't deserve it. We really don't. Okay. Well, back on track. I mean, um, we don't deserve the world. Exactly. <laughs> is what I meant. We as humans are consistently failing it. Anyway, the, uh, <laughs> the real possibility of war with Iran seems to have put ex-Trump official John Bolton in an uncharacteristically good and charitable mood. Oh, is that so? To the extent that he's now reversed course and agreed to testify in an impeachment trial if subpoenaed. <laughs> uh, his only condition was that Democrats shoot him in the arm first so Republicans wouldn't know he was a traitor. <laughs> you uh, motherfucker. Nancy Pelosi complied, uh, shooting him in the leg instead, and then asked Mr. Bolton what his reasons were for aiding impeachment efforts. Bolton replied that, like many in the Republican Party, he didn't care if the Democrats win. He only needed Donald Trump to lose. 
sadly, what are what are we referencing here? I'm confused. Sadly, however, he's referencing movie of the year. It seems that Mrs. Pelosi will have to do without his help, as Mr. Bolton was only moments later shot in the chest by a stone-faced Stephen Miller, who suspected the former <laughs> National Security Advisor's secret treachery. <laughs> I found a spy. <laughs> I don't know if that's what he sounds like, but I think it'd be funny if he did. The only Steve Miller I know is a good singer. <laughs> also, terrible wildfires are killing all the animals in Australia, and it's really, really sad, and I don't want to think about it, so I'm going to turn the show over to you two, so I won't have to it take is, it away. It's a real shame, all that barbecued kangaroo just going to waste. <laughs> and just, you ever had kangaroo? No. It's tasty. <laughs> Kangaroos are dying by the droves of smoke inhalation and burning instead of just being hit by cars, as nature intended. <laughs> <laughs> uh I hate it when they when the roos come out. They try and box the cars. <laughs> try to have a fight with my ute. <laughs> <laughs> One way and out. Oh boy. Well, welcome to a somber new year. We're already off on the right foot, blowing on all cylinders. Uh, we're, we're firing off fast, and I tell you what, what a time to be alive because Frankenstein Control is back. Your one true light of hope in this infinite darkness this ever-growing infinite darkness of our expanding heat death universe <laughs> frankenstein control is your one and only friend so welcome dear josh is back to a new year frankenstein control i'm your host the ever emphatic and ever emphatic taylor russell to my right is ada ship hi i'm ada and i'm the true source of all darkness you motherfucker, you should have told me that. I can't help it. I just keep expanding. <laughs> it's, it's due to CC's inhalation. <laughs> oh, boy. And in front of me, as always, is b Uh I'm b Rye, and uh, the new year would be getting off to a better start if I had not somehow accumulated a bunch of weird new health problems <laughs> in only, like, a few short days. Uh, also, Ida, yeah, I had been meaning to tell you something that, you know, your darkness is really... You're putting on a lot of darkness there, and uh, yeah. I'm concerned for your heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a heart of darkness. Oh, okay, oh well, fine. You'll, be, you'll be fine. You'll just chop the hands off some children with a machete. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah. That's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it was Tuesday. Uh, so, you know, hey, uh, everybody, it's, it's, it's great to be back in one room recording again. It's been a, it's been a hot minute. <laughs> it's been <laughs> like a we, month. Yeah. It, feel, it certainly feels like it. <clears throat> like, God damn, it's been a long time. And Good thing our uh, our break was was wasn't two weeks long, and instead it was one week, and then two weeks on, and then one week off, and that happened because I just forgot to do <laughs> to do the episode. <laughs> we like to maintain an air of transparency here. <laughs> yeah, at break is nine control. We will never be dishonest with you, our audience, unless we're doing a bit. <laughs> And we're always doing a bit, so we're always dishonest. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. You know, B.R.I., speaking of health issues, you really should have that pogo lung looked at. Yeah, I uh, think they finally figured out what that was, or at least WebMD seems to tell me that it's pogo lung. So, oh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm matching all the symptoms. It could also just be a regular cough, but I'm, I'm assuming that it's pogo lung and that I'm going to die. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what did the doctor say about your whooping butt? I don't have whooping butt. You're the one with whooping butt. <laughs> Well, the symptom of whooping butt is not knowing who has whooping butt, so you can't blame me for not knowing it was it was you. Oh my god, everyone has whooping butt because no one's been vaccinating their children, and <gasps> this is the world we've wrought. On butt notes to the United States, <laughs> this was the true killer of all creatures on the planet. The whooping butt. Whoop! <laughs> I feel like whooping butt is a Bob's Burgers joke, but I could be wrong. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, Louise tells me that she's got whooping butt. <laughs> oh my god Bobby Bobby <laughs> Brendan <laughs> <laughs> they did do a soccer episode in a recent series oh really a, a season what are you British you see, yeah I know right um, <clears throat> but like there was some kids on the other team that I think one of them suspiciously was like supposed to be a direct reference to Melissa yeah and uh, possibly to Jason and like the other you know, home movies characters, and it was pretty, pretty well done, and then sneakily fit in there. They had like the more updated. I'd hesitate to call Bob's Burgers art style more realistic, <laughs> but it's more realistic than home movies was. Yeah, home, home movies. All the character silhouettes were created by the the staff, uh, like the director's staff's children. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they were told to draw shapes, and they said, "That's Coach McGurk." 
Is that really what happened? No, but it sounds believable, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> I can't. I can't not think of Coach McGurk without thinking of that Sonichu thing where the dad was <laughs> just unabashedly Coach McGurk. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like a cop or something. Speaking of uh, horrible travesties and train wrecks. Oh, boy. Uh, I heard that a movie came out recently <laughs> that uh, is, is not that great. Yeah. The dead speak. What are you talk- well, we're talking about Cats. Star Wars oh, was a yeah. fantastic quality <laughs> film that let down no one. Cats. While we're on the subject of Cats, before we, before we leave that subject. Yeah, before we dive in. Um, cats has always seemed nightmarish to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It always just seems like the plot does not make sense at all. And any attempt to explain it to me over the 30 years that I've been alive has resulted in confusion and a vague sense of unease Mm -hmm. and the characters just they've always looked like nightmares (laughs) i actually think the new cgi versions of them are less disturbing than the original broadway musical Mm -hmm. Uh, i remember seeing that when i was a kid and grasping first off they all have fucking weird names and i guess like andrew lloyd Webber thought that oh it'd be funny to give these serious cat characters names like people give their cats and so they gave them all nonsense (laughs) names but like I've never named a cat something really stupid (laughs) like that well see you're just no fun instead of naming your cat pumpkin you should have named him like tug tug penis (laughs) Uh, you should have named your cat hand job (laughs) come here hand job I, Come here, Handy J. All of our kitties' pumpkins' name came from the um, <laughs> pumpkins' name came from the shelter. All of our cats have always had people names like yeah. Cecil and and <laughs> Cecil now. <laughs> yeah, Cecil, my he's a good old boy. He really is with Grandpa now. I yeah. want to name a cat Gerald Ford. <laughs> That'd be that is an excellent <laughs> name for a cat. So is, come on, come on, Gerald Ford, <clears throat> come here. And he won't come to you because he's a fucking cat. <laughs> um, he, pumpkins, pumpkin runs when you know he hears us call for him. Well, that's because your voice has a gravelly sound to it that makes it sound like a food bag being shook up. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the, the rocks in my throat, in my uh, my gizzard. From the pogo lung. Yes. Um, no, but getting back to cats real yes, quick. Yes, cats. Like, the plot, from what I understand, and the character names and their appearances all just seems like some shit my brain would come up with when I was sick and uh, had a dream. It's a fever dream. And it's just, it makes me feel awful. And I, I've never liked cats for that reason. I feel ill. <laughs> yeah, like, um, I'm going to do a hot uh, turnaround on that, and I think the CG cat people are way, way worse than the stage versions of the Cats crew just because, uh, at least with the with the cats on stage, they're in costume, and you know they exist, and there's nothing making you go... I hate this. I want to. I want to gouge out my eyes because I have seen the unnatural. I have gazed beyond what was allowed by humanity's bounds, and now I am paying the price for it. <laughs> and that's kind of what I get by seeing the CG people in Cats. Mm. They just look all they. All the people in the CG Cats movie look like when people like in kids' cartoons and stuff when they edit b- big human mouths onto cats like onto cute little cats kitty cats like they put human eyes and human mouths and they like the photo impose them on them to look all silly and fucked up when weird looking uh-huh. you know generally accompanied with like a oh! or something that's what everybody in those movies looks like and it just unsettles me to no end and i hate it i reserve the right to change my answer about the cg cat people um if i actually saw the from what i've heard tell the various scenes with them having expanding breasts and humping each other and weird shit like that. That I've heard that happens, granted. I've I've read that the whole movie is extremely horny. Yeah. Like unnecessarily horny. Like apparently the original play is fairly horny, but this like turns it up way more than it should. It turns it to eleven and breaks the knob off. Yeah. <laughs> breaks oh. your knob off. Yeah. <laughs> Break, breaks their knob off. Yeah. Uh, uh I mean yeah. like I mean who can forget the scene where uh, Rebel Wilson just just pegs Idris Elba no, for five no. minutes straight. <laughs> no, man, that's some cinematic gold. I tell you what, that's fucking Oscar worthy right there. Uh, <laughs> hashtag Oscar bait. I just like, the only way I know she's in that movie is because I saw a trailer where she was swinging around some kind of chain weapon, like she's friggin' Go Go from Kill Bill or something. <laughs> <laughs> 
Go go and ca- oh, go go bordello. No, that's yeah, that. I'm swinging around the chain weapon. What's that weird? The Roma people, man. <laughs> Wait, you can't say the Roma people anymore. You can't. You can't say that anymore. <laughs> Ada, edit that into say. So I'm saying the Roma people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Anyway, back to Star Wars. <laughs> Ada really wants me to. I yeah. I uh, have not seen any of the new trilogy. I, I've heard, I've experienced uh, multiple drunken Taylor rants uh, <laughs> about how much he loves the first two, or at least the was it the Last Jedi? Yeah, yeah. yeah the 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 Last Jedi was was really good in my opinion. I mean, obviously it has flaws. So does every movie. No movie is perfect. And what about I, We're Back, a dinosaur story? Uh, that is a perfect ten out of ten movie. You better okay. not fucking talk shit about We're Back, a dinosaur story starring John Goodman and <laughs> Professor Screw Eyes. <laughs> Thank you very much. He's um, credited as Professor Screw Eyes. <laughs> he voiced himself. But I guess he died in real life. He's credited as the print symbol, like in that uh, <laughs> fucking cargo. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, no. Uh, before I get into this, I should preface everything I'm about to say with: if you disliked the Last Jedi, you know, that's fine. You can dislike whatever movie you want. Like I, <laughs> I'm not trying to be the you gotta like this police. Um, so when I, it, the, the problem is that that movie had lots of undue, uh, bitching. Well, not bitching more as it is. Um, uh, yes, that's the word harassment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it was a fucking nightmare and everybody who did that kind of shit should be ashamed of themselves and launch themselves off a tree right now. Uh, but anyway. Moving past that. How do you launch yourself off a tree? Uh, but with a noose. Oh, yeah. Okay, that'll work. <laughs> I'm not sure that constitutes launching, but go on. Um, Why don't you just say shoot yourself? <laughs> because. Fall down the gun. <laughs> <laughs> because that's too quick. Mm-hmm. Um, but no. Um, so uh, on Sunday night, I went to go. I went to the Alamo, thank God, because they have alcohol. Um, <laughs> uh, we went to go see The Rise of Skywalker, the third and final movie. Listen, and I had seen it the previous Friday in the in the Star Wars sequel trilogy is what's commonly being used to describe this, because you know you had you had the the core movies, and then you had the prequels, and now it's the sequels because yeah. this isn't confusing enough. Yeah. So it's the third in in line, and um, who oh boy, it uh, it was a uh, it was a movie that exists. <laughs> um, I at first I walked out of the theater. Doing the old crusty the clown like what the hell was that? But then um, <laughs> the home stuck with that. <laughs> yeah, but then like as I thought about it more and more, I'm like, God, this movie's a fucking disaster. <laughs> what a what a fucking nightmare I just watched. And like, I mean, obviously this is now. <laughs> now we're gonna get into spoilers for the uh, Rise of Skywalker, so. Heads I'll, up on this. Yeah, one. I'll tell you when they end. It's going to be at the end of the episode. Yeah, we're going to talk about this for the rest of the episode. Okay, so from minute one of this movie, God fucking damn it, mm. there is just constant, nonstop shit <laughs> happening at you, and it Pretty just much. never stops. It really doesn't. First off, like I wanted to touch on the fact that the you know the scrolling text that begins every Star Wars movie. Say, you know, mentions that a cryptic message from Palpatine himself has reverberated throughout the galaxy and set many on edge. Uh huh. And I, I've I've commented this elsewhere, but it really does seem to act like the the movie, for all intents and purposes, seems to treat the trailer where he did the Palpatine laugh like it's part of the movies. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. th- that's that was your exposition provided in that trailer uh-huh. for the fact that he's back because we're not going to show that he's back mm-hmm. and show everyone surprised and shocked reverberations throughout the galaxy like in the actual movie you're just supposed to have seen the trailer and heard his hi <laughs> 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 hi hey, hey, it's me Emperor Palpatine! <laughs> uh, I don't know what's all the crusty references, but I... <laughs> Cru- so Kylo so, Ren dressed... It's, but it's Sideshow Mel. <laughs> yes! He got the bone in his hair. <laughs> it's, uh, Pal- crusty the Emperor and Sideshow Kylo. Um, so, yeah, the, the, 
the movie starts out in the beginning crawl, unlike any other beginning crawl in the Star Wars franchise. And like, you know, I'm not one for, um, you know, I'm not a huge demanding st- tradition. Yeah. Like, I mean, I like the last Jedi. There you go. Um, but like, it's the beginning crawl. There's sort of a format to it and it just, it's weird to have, is it just different? Well, like, you know, most of the other Star Wars movies begin with that, da, 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 in the beginning crawl, and it's like, you know, it is a time of great unrest in the galaxy. The do dub do the thing happens. But in this one, literally, first lines of the beginning crawl is, the dead speak! <laughs> it's like, is this a radio play? Yeah. Like, I get that this is supposed to be old school, but, like, this is weird old school. It's kind of like the Clone Wars uh, CGI cartoon where, where each episode begins with a radio play. Yeah. Anakin Skywalker and his Jedi Ahsoka and his Padawan they're, they're going to the Trade Federation and they're going to fuck a guy in the butt <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of the planet fuck a guy in the butt <laughs> but anyway uh, <laughs> but anyway um, yeah so uh, I'm, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get scooting now so this movie is just 100% a fuck ride all the way through. There is absolutely no stopping whatsoever. There's no time to breathe. <laughs> the movie is just waterboarding you with content. <laughs> it's awful. It's just such It's such a fuck. It's a migraine. Uh-huh. The movie is a living migraine. And uh, <laughs> the whole first half of the movie, I can barely tell you what the fuck happened Mm -hmm. yeah that's because there was just so much shit happening constantly i couldn't get over i was just like what the fuck and then finally things kind of sort of slowed down once they got to um the middle of the movie Mm -hmm. where things there was a brief moment where i could process everything i just saw i was like oh oh thank god oh fuck and it uh it uh but here's what i remember from the beginning of the movie There was a relatively cool scene where they're doing this big information heist to get information from this spy in the ranks of the the Empire, or the First Order. And they're like, oh, what's going on? Uh, And Poe and Finn are riding around in the Millennium Falcon with a giant fucking slug for some reason. A giant (laughs) seven-foot slug man who's just horrifying. And they're riding through and... Who never shows up again. Well, he's like briefly in the background <laughs> yeah. of other scenes. Yeah, he's just they're, there. They're presenting him like he's a new member of the crew and you're going to get to know who he is. He's the no. new member of the DK crew. Um, <laughs> he's like the, the, the realistic art style of Slurms McKenzie. <laughs> so anyway, they're rushing around the Millennium Falcon with Salt Me Kong and uh, they're, <laughs> they, they, they get chased by some TIE fighters and the Poe's like, watch this shit. And he fucking kicks it into gear only for us. He kicks the hyperdrive only for a second and then comes back and they're like in a completely different environment Mm -hmm. and then he like does it again when they get chased by more shit and he keeps doing it and they're like you can't light speed hop and he's like I'm fucking doing it you're seeing it happen (laughs) and like this is something I want to touch upon Mm -hmm. um I have a very mixed feeling about this movie I think it's garbage but there are I can't I can't completely hate it I can't completely hate it because there's a lot of small there's a lot of the the few small moments there are in this movie are very character driven, mm-hmm. and that's great. I actually really like the character moments in this movie. I think everybody has snappy and fun dialogue, and they play off each other. First time in the fucking trilogy, we're getting actual like good chemistry between our characters. It's awesome. Uh, for instance, Poe and Ray in this trilogy have met two times in this entire trilogy, and it's all in this movie. Mm. <laughs> to uh, to ape to ape a, a podcast that I saw recently that it's a very good point. Um, uh, I think it was the Team Four Star podcast. But anyway, um, so a bunch of shit is fucking happening in the beginning. They're like, "Well, message from the spy: the the, the the Emperor Palpatine is back, and this time he's pissed, and we gotta go. We gotta fucking go to the Sith homeworld, which is Ex- called Exegol. Exegol. <laughs> and when I first heard them said that, say that. I thought they said extacle. Yeah. Like from Frisky Dingo, <laughs> yeah, the stupid... <laughs> We're the extacles. The stupid guys from Frisky Dingo. I was like, they seriously named the planet extacle? <laughs> what? 
Oh, wait, hold on. I meant, forgot to mention, the first thing you see after the crawl is Kylo Ren going around beating dudes up in the woods. Yeah, and then they the go fuck to, was that? They, they go to the doing that for no reason. And then they go to a big info heist, and then they go, okay, we got the info from the spy. Very important rebel, uh, very important spy in the First Order. Remember that, kids? And they're like, I'm not gonna fucking remember that. And then they go, we gotta fucking for the light speed to hop across the galaxy. We gotta go back to the base, and at the base, we gotta learn about the, the Sith holocron, because that's what it is. It's a fucking holocron. They don't call it a holocron, but it's a holocron. What's a holocron? A holocron is basically a USB but for Jedi okay. and um, so they're like we gotta get the Sith holocron it's the only place that tells the location of the Ex 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 Excelsior planet so we gotta go to a planet to get the directions to the holocron that gives us the directions to Excelsior and I'm gonna okay. keep calling it that because it's funny um and so they go to a desert plant, and there's a big goofy party, and then again another fun character moment. But but it was a like, fuck that. We gotta get we gotta get uh, run from some stormtroopers in the desert, and they got tank motorcycles, and then we're gonna fall in a hole, and there's a big old snake, and the snake is all mad, except it's all wounded for some reason. And Ray's like, "Hey guys, watch this shit." And she uh, uh, busts out force healing. Uh huh. Force healing is a thing now. Um, I I'd be a hypocrite if I said it was just. Pull like force powers being pulled out of one's ass is antithetical, antithetical to the Star Wars franchise. No, that constantly fucking happens. But anyway, she fucking heals the snake and the snake be the snake befriends them. They go outside. They're like, oh, no, 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 they captured Chewie. He's in that spaceship. We gotta go save him, Ray. And the Ray's like, don't worry, I'll force pull the spaceship down. And she's actually doing it. I'm like, whoa, damn, she's strong. And then Kylo Ren shows up. And he's like, no, you don't. And he tries to force push it away. And then she's like, ooh, I'm trying real hard. And then she fucking lightnings. She force lightnings the ship and it fucking explodes and she thinks she's killed Chewie. <laughs> this all happens within the first like 15 minutes of the movie. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, it turns out Chewie isn't a prisoner, uh, isn't, wasn't killed in the blast. He was on another carrier that we never saw him get on that separate I'm, character. We never saw any clue that I'm, this I'm happened. I'm going to bring two identical, uh, this is my Kylo Ren voice, because I actually don't really remember what Adam <laughs> Driver sounds like. I, I'm going to bring two identical ships and just waste the lives of three pilots having them do a decoy thing to make Ray pull it down. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to bring two, even though you only see one ship flying into the atmosphere of the planet and landing, we brought two identical ships and they're right here. And look, <laughs> Chewbacca's dead, Chewbacca! Because <laughs> literally the next scene, they're like, we bought it. We got a, a very important prisoner general on board. The and, whatever. and then they play this triumphant music like da -da 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 -da, as they're like, torture the prisoner. <laughs> like, what? And then you don't even get to see any of that because they're, they're back on the desert planet. And they're like, OK, we found the directions. It's, it's sketched on this knife. We can't read it. C-3PO, do you know Sith? He's like, yes, I know Sith. They're like, cool, translate this. He's like, oh, my programming forbids me from reading Sith. And he's like. <laughs> What? And so <laughs> they go, well, and then Poe's like, uh, I don't know a guy. He's on another planet. He's on a snowy planet. We got to go to a snowy planet. He'll 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 go into C-3PO's gotta, memory banks we, and reprogram his ass. Even though he's a fucking robot, shouldn't people be able to reprogram? Uh, no. He's so rebooting anyway. him like an iPhone. <laughs> Just restore factory settings. But just know they got to go all the way to snowy crime world to do that. And also, I know I'm just basically recapping the movie, but this is fucking necessary. So... They go to the winter planet, and the winter planet pose like, I know a guy, I know a guy, blah, 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 blah. And then they get jumped by these people in the street. And the people in the street, one of them's dressed like a Power Ranger and sounds like Nebula from <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. Exactly both of those <laughs> things are 100% true. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, Poe, you left us. And he's like, no, I didn't. And she's like, hey, did you guys know he used to run Spice? And they're like, you run Spice? He's like, I ran Spice. You ran Spice. I ran Spice, and you ran Spice, and a pew! Ah, oh, my leg! And, the, you know, some bad shit happens. Ray beats her up, and she's like, hey, you're pretty good. And Ray's like, cool. Man. And so they go to this little the, this little hideout in the snowy land. In a Furby uh, uh, cracks uh, into uh, yeah, C-3PO. A, a bipedal furry walks in. He's like, oh, <laughs> and fixes up C-3PO real good. And they're like, C-3PO, we have to wipe your memory so that you can uh, read the Sith letters. And he's like, oh, word. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, C-3PO, you got to erase your memory, Morty. And C-3PO is like, oh, my. <laughs> and... <laughs> He gets his memory wiped. He's like, who are you? And they're like, we gotta go. And then they start running running from the fucking Sith. And then they have this moment where Kylo Ren is on a uh, Star Destroyer on the snowy planet. And Ray fucking contacts him. And he contacts They have the, like, the mind bridge thing again. But this time, shit like their mind bridge starts affecting things in real life. Like Darth Vader's helmet that <laughs> Kylo has chilling out in his room. Because <laughs> he's a weeaboo. Mm -hmm. And uh, that gets knocked over in a little like 
mind fight that they have, and that's like a little indicator of what happens later. So anyway, they ha- they finally went to the desert planet, got the directions, went to the winter planet so they can read the directions. Now they're going to another planet for oh, some... But first they briefly stop on board a uh, Star Destroyer and rescue Chewie. And that's, yes. that's all that happens. They briefly stop on a well, Star no, Destroyer. Well, the, no, the important part is, while they're rescuing Chewie, the spy is revealed. Oh, yes. The spy is revealed. It's Hux. It's Hux. The, the and that was the exact scene that I had with John Bolton in the. Uh, okay. and that was what I was. That's referencing. what I figured. Yeah, shoot me in the arm. Shoot me in the arm so they don't know I'm a spy. And they're like, "Why are you helping us?" And he's like, "I don't want the rebels to win. I just want Kylo Ren to lose." And you're like, "Okay, cool, bro." And then, like immediately, he's like, "Oh, dude, they shot me in the arm. Oh, what a bad time. They got away." And boom, he gets shot and killed. This major character starring in two movies. Just dead. Abruptly just shot. Abruptly shot and dead. Meanwhile, our group heads off to uh, Endor. <laughs> heads off to fucking Endor. Ocean planet. Fucking, I have to say, that whole scenery of that entire planet was really fucking cool. The giant uh, interstellar sized waves flying all around and the, the, the sunken, destroyed Death Star. That was pretty sweet. That looked really cool. What isn't fucking cool is that this is the place where they're going to get the holocron and they go there they go to an exact cliffside on an exact side of the planet. They had no means of knowing why the fuck they would be at that one. They just crash landed there. It's a whole planet. They, it's a whole fucking planet and then Ray goes to the foot of a cliff and then looks at the like silhouette of the Death Star and then she holds up the knife and a, the blade of the knife is shaped exactly like the wreckage of the Death Star. And she lines it up and pulls out this little thing in the knife that points to where the holocron is. And it's like, no! <laughs> this is stupid! And then she goes into the Death Star. And her and Kylo Ren have a big goofy fight. And then Kylo Ren's like, you want this holocron? And she's like, sure, I'll have it. And then... Psh- and then they have a big old lightsaber fight. Oh, first, first, she uh, briefly lightsaber fights with her own dark side image, oh, yeah. which yeah. Frodo hisses at her. Yeah, she has <laughs> she she has her very own like force vision thing, kind of like you know how she had Bilbo a force, hisses, uh, not well, Frodo. Well, she had a fuck. Oh yeah, I forgot. She Bilbo hisses at her, and it's the uh, at herself shit. at herself. Her her dark side. <laughs> I'm your dark self. side self. <laughs> yeah, it's just the stupidest shit. Okay, so recap. All of this shit that I've just mentioned, this is an hour into the film. In a two-hour film? I think, like, two and a half hours, but, like, fuck. There's so much that fucking happens, and this was the point where I was allowed to fucking breathe because there was an actually good moment in the film where, after all the lightsaber fight happens, Ray stabs his ass through the fucking chest. With his own saber. Yeah, as, as Leia dies to give him one last message of, don't do it, Ben. Except, you know, they can only use Carrie Fisher's dead ass lines because she's fucking dead. And so, like, don't do it. By the way, that's also why there weren't a bunch of scenes with Rose Tico, who is like the big, she's like the cute girl that Finn likes. And uh, uh-huh. Oh, I know. Yeah. And so there's apparently going to be a whole bunch of scenes with her in the movie. The reason she's like hardly in the movie at all is because there was going to be a whole bunch of scenes with her and Leah back at the base this whole time. Uh-huh. But they had to do Carrie Fisher with CGI because she's dead. And then in the oh, end, that's really convenient. Despite their massive budget, they're like, "Yeah, she doesn't look believable. We can't use these." <laughs> and they scrapped them all, and that's why she's not in the movie at all. Hmm. So, Rose one, is, I mean, like pretty much one of the only good scenes in the film. Uh, ben has a like memory conversation with the ghost of his dad, and it's actually first off, Harrison Ford is acting for once. He actually is a better actor in this film than he was in the other film where his character was alive. And it was great, and it was like I teared up a little bit actually because mm-hmm. it was very. It was a good scene, acted well, and properly paced. <sighs> we have neighbors, Taylor. Oh, I just I get worked up. <laughs> I can tell. Oh my god, this this fucking movie, man. Like, well, here's so, some some comedic levity, real quick. <laughs> okay, what? A lot of people in this movie, and I won't say who. Well, we're recapping the entire movie, so there's no reason for me not to say who. But I don't feel like saying who because it would be just listing names. But several characters die and just sort of vanish into the force. <laughs> and every time they do that, I really want a rip of the movie where the like noise that Dramoras make when they die when you summon them that. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> they fade back into Force Ghost loop phase away and just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my god So here's the funny thing Everything I just told you happened within basically the first half of the movie The second half of the movie Is the reason why I can remember it better Because 
it's paced slightly slower and there's things like like you can actually focus on what the fuck is going on instead of trying to figure out how to catch your breath yeah <sighs> the big reveal ladies and gentlemen then they get to uh, Ray oh yeah go ahead. is a Palpatine as in she's like his daughter granddaughter granddaughter, granddaughter. my granddaughter yeah also Palpatine like, fucked Evidently, that's a horrifying like that idea. At all. I don't like it either. Oh man, it's probably just, back when he had his normal. You uh, see him even <laughs> uh, still. I don't like. You that. just see him in his stately senator's quarters and silk underpants, and he just like starts gesturing his hand towards his motor, going, "You want this, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Take it, strike me down." <laughs> Do, do it. Um. By the way, though, like <laughs> this is a re- reading a lot like my uh, Anakin slash uh, Palpatine impreg fan. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> okay, so here's well, the funny part: you Ray's parents weren't nobodies; they were somebodies. They were the, the one of them was the daughter slash son of Emperor Palpatus. It was the son and daughter-in-law of Palpatine. Yes, yeah, son and son and daughter-in-law of Pap. Sure. And then they My had, son was worthless. That boy ain't right. <laughs> and so, like, I guess the Force is like diabetes and it skips a generation. Uh, so, like, Ray has Palpatine Force diabetes and <laughs> the whole thing, the whole setup is that uh, Ray has to come to the home world to take down Palpatine. That's the big, that's the big mission. Meanwhile, Palpatine, and he wants her to kill him. Yes, he Why? wants he wants her to kill him because I I want you to become Empress Palpatine, and you will carry on the will of the Sith in me. Blah. And so, like, there's all these Sith cultists who are not explored at all. Well, I like to think that they're all just clones of Snoke, because <laughs> in the beginning, Kylo Ren finally shows up in Palpatine's chamber mm-hmm. which by the way is the only other cool thing to also me in like that movie. they never explain anything about like kylo ren's like anime character weapon wielding entourage boys oh yeah the knights, the knights of, ren. of ren yeah the knights like- of ren they fucking suck <laughs> they're, the knights of ren they're fucking useless and they get killed by ben solo with a blaster in his pajamas but we'll get to that so anyway in the beginning there's this sith that the place where palpatine is living he actually lives in this really cool blade runner-esque building that looks fucking awesome and mythic as shit because there's like it's held up by lightning or something and it looks really <laughs> fucking rad it's awesome wasted of course wasted opportunity um but anyway uh, ben shows up at the beginning and he's like oh i killed snoke i can kill you too and then and Palpatine's like, I made Snoke. And they fucking cut to a big old test tube full of Snokes. Like, like Ray. Like, like the Ray tank from Evangelion. It's just filled yeah. with Snokes. Yeah, it's just filled to the brim. Speaking f- of. Filled with pickled Snokes. And it's really fucking stupid. Speaking of mass producing things, his convenient massive fleet of Star Destroyers that yes. just appears on the planet. And I'm thinking like. You know, forget fucking Jeff Bezos. Like, I want to be the CEO of Kuat Drive Yards because, like, <laughs> that, whoever that guy is, he's going to be fucking rolling with this, you know, not only the final order, the first order contracts of shipbuilding. All but of then the final deep, order. The final on. order. Boy, I got to tell you. Well, you'd be, you're a rich man if you work for Dijon Mustard Drive Company. <laughs> okay, so Ada just told me we're running low on time, so I need to hurry this up. Uh, speaking of, first off, to answer your question about the Star Destroyers, I think all of those are being piloted by Snoke clones, too. I just think any stormtrooper that you see who is not does not have a face is just a Snoke clone. <laughs> we have to. It's more convenient than recruiting. So anyway, a bunch of dumb shit happens. Like, uh, Finn befriends a bunch of people, and they storm a... They storm one of the thousands of Star Destroyers on Exegol, and they storm it on foot. They land on a Star Destroyer and unload soldiers oh, onto Oh, not it on foot, with, Taylor. With horses. I was going to say, not on foot. With, on horses. With space horses. What? With space, yes, with space horses. And they go, attack, it's Lord of the Rings now. And they space do it. Space horses. So anyway, while all this shit is going on. Space uh, horses? Uh, uh, space horses. Just let it go. Okay. I did. Uh, so anyway, during Space Horse Battle, Ray confronts Palpatine, and he fucking actually says it. He says the line. Mm-hmm. He actually goes, do it. 
and it's the best. <laughs> oh yeah, Liz and I shared a long look when he said that. We did enjoy that a lot. It was a like, dude. He said the thing. Our, my group just laughed out loud. We didn't give a fuck by that point. So anyway, um, he's like, do it. And then uh, Ray's like, okay, here I go. And then meanwhile, Kylo Ren's like, hey, guess what? I'm good again. I'm, I'm a good boy. Let's let's take him down. <laughs> let's, let's take down the puppies. And then they do. And um, and they start to fight him, and the Palpatine's like, "No!" And he fucking life vampires them, and becomes like young again, <laughs> and turns younger. Younger. He turns. He becomes younger again. He's like, "Ha ha! You see, it was my trick all along. I'm playing 4D chess, y'all. I'm woke as fuck." And then he, <laughs> and then he becomes all young and He's like, "Ah, watch this shit!" And he he fucking shoots a goddamn lightning laser into the sky because fucking J.J. Abrams can't fucking contain himself mm -hmm. and he needs to he needs to be like every hollywood schmuck movie and have a giant laser in the fucking sky because fuck you and it starts destroying all the rebel ships and stuff and then ray's like no i'm gonna I'm fight you and you're like okay and she's like i'm gonna absorb your lightning with my lightsaber and palpatine's like yeah and lightning's him and then she's like ah it's so hard and then she pulls out leia's lightsaber <laughs> And now she has two lightsabers, and somehow that's better than one at consuming lightning. And then Palpatine just keeps lightninging her, and she gets closer and closer. And he's like, "No, more lightning! This will yeah. work!" And then it gets so lightningy that it backfires on him and melts his face, Raiders of the Lost Ark style. I'm, I'm not, I'm not kidding. His face melts, Raiders of the Lost Ark style, and then he disintegrates, and the. Raiders Yes. Somebody else in a different podcast also said, uh, "Is force lightning like peeing? Once you start, you can't stop." And that's why that's why he doesn't just stop. Once he realizes that the lightning is being reflected back at him, he doesn't just stop shooting the lightning because he could have just done that and not disintegrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So yeah, that shit happens, and then Ray falls to the ground and she used up all of her her force powers, I guess, and she dies. She literally dies. I have to say, Daisy Ridley. Her, her dead wooden acting is finally put to good use because she has the most convincing corpse I've ever seen. It was disturbing. I'll give her that credit. It was fucking disturbing. She plays a dead person really well. Hmm. So anyway, she's fucking dead and Kylo shows up and he's like, oh, no, no, don't die. And all of this is wordless, by the way. I'm just throwing in funnies. But uh, he's, he's, he rubs her belly to give her good luck. <laughs> he, he crawls out of the hole that Palpatine oh, briefly yeah. kicked him down. Yeah, in the Palpatine of the throws fight. him into a hole. That's why he's not there when Ray defeats him. Ah. So anyway, he you go down the hole for a bit. He crawls out of the troll hole. <laughs> Because he paid the toll. And uh, <laughs> now he can get into he, that he, he comes hole. over to Ray and gives her a nice little belly rub. And he's like, shh, shh, baby, it's okay. Shh, shh. Okay, he doesn't do any of that. He's just quiet and crying. And then, like, he starts force healing her somehow, but there's no wounds of hers to show closing up or anything. So she just kind of, like, <laughs> comes back to life mm -hmm. and gives him a big old smack on the lips. And <laughs> when he did that, Myself and I swear I heard someone else in the theater go no, because <laughs> it was gross and weird and why it, would they kiss? Uh, why would they kiss? Exactly. Yeah. They have, they have, why they have no chem chemistry? That's not been part of this at all this entire time. I mean, like they had a bit of chemistry throughout the the thing, but I, so I won't say they didn't have chemistry. But that moment was very wrong for it. It was very wrong for a kiss. And then Kylo goes hurt and he dies. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> Into the and force. Me, like me, my friends, a bunch of other people in the theater were laughing because I'm pretty sure we all had the same idea of he was going to die and then she was going to bring him back to life and then she would die and then he had to bring her back to life and they'd just be stuck in this death loop forever. Of course, that didn't happen. He he forced disappeared. So somewhere there's a, a nude Kylo ghost wandering around. <laughs> and at the end of the movie, the the you know the they have a big Return of the Jedi esque escapade of, of garbage of Complete you know, with a re lesbian kiss. Yes, and they have an irrelevant lesbian kiss because they're fucking cowards. Yeah. And they need something easy to edit out for you know communist gold audiences, <laughs> and they don't like the gays over there. So you got to have something that's easy to edit out. You can't have Poe and Finn who have had basically the only two characters with any can decent kind of chemistry the whole movie. You can't have them be the gay. Don't do it. Um, and it sucks. You gay. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> you won't be gay. No, it's, it's fucking stupid. And then finally, the movie ends. Ray is back on Tatooine, even though she's never been there and has, you know, an, somebody pointed this out on the internet. 
A, this is a shitty desert planet that no one likes. Luke hated being there. Leia never lived there. Rey's never even seen it. Yet she goes back there and buries both Luke and Leia's lightsabers in the sand like it's some kind of big thing. And this, I shit you not, a fucking no one lady just rides up. Whole fucking desert. Whole big ass empty desert. Lady pulls up on Rey and at Aunt Beru's igloo, who I was expecting Aunt Beru's smoldering skeleton to still be there. <laughs> but anyway, there she is, <laughs> just like paying respects, I guess, to the Barry lightsabers. And this fucking no one lady out of nowhere comes up on a camel and she's like, no one's been around these parts for a while. Who are you? And then she's like, I'm Rey. Rey Skywalker. Da, 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 da. Nah, 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 kill myself <laughs> and it was real shit mm-hmm. and I'm just gonna say this you are very sweaty I I, I, I <laughs> he's all worked up I am positively moist yes I'm, I'm super moist with hatred I'm moist with hatred and I'll tell you this the reason why this movie felt so rushed is because JJ Abrams and Disney were trying their absolute best to do damage control damage control that didn't need to be done to try and reverse the last jedi because this movie and its pacing is very clear evidence that they were trying to do J- what jj abrams wanted for his second movie in and a third movie in one movie mm. and that's why it's so rushed and shitty and i mean yeah maybe rose did have a lot of scenes with leia or maybe it was all those fucking harassers Mm. Asshole people complaining constantly, Mm -hmm. making her life horrible. Yeah. Now we have less Rose. Yeah. And I just want to say that if you didn't like The Last Jedi, I will reiterate. That's fine. You didn't like a movie. That's cool. What isn't cool is this movie that we got is a direct result of all the people out there who harassed who whined constantly, who tried to get all that clout that you get for those sweet YouTube views by dissing the fucking Last Jedi and calling it the worst film on the planet. And you know what? All that bullying, all that bullshit, you get the rise of Skywalker, you reap what you sow. Happy Frankenstein fucking control. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to have to go uh, put Taylor down for a nap. He's, he's very... Just put working. me down forever. <laughs> you, just, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll shoot lightning at you constantly. And you just yeah. reflect it back at me. <laughs> ah! Good night, everybody. Do it. <laughs> now, even you know I am a menace. I hand you the secret to save the entire human race and the entire universe.